What's up guys, welcome, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm creating the very first video of a new series I'm starting called Solo Leveling Log. This is my space to talk about what I'm learning, the issues that I'm running into and how I fix them, and some of the books that I'm starting to read to kind of level up my skills. This series is gonna be a little bit different from the videos that you guys are used to seeing where I kind of choose one thing and then dive into it in detail and add it to the lab environment that I'm building. This one is gonna be the video that kind of talk about some of the things that I have to go through to learn those things before I get, in, get to the final result. So you're going to see me, what I do to struggle, what I do to learn, how I come to a conclusion to learn about certain things. So this is going to be that series. And of course, the end result is going to be the long form video. So think of this series as the unfiltered side of the journey where I vent, share wins and fails with you guys and go beyond the regular lab build video. I've got a stack of books that I want to go through and read. And I thought to myself, instead of reading them quietly in my little tiny corner that I have over here, <laughs> I thought, why not kind of take you guys along for the journey so you guys can get to see some of the things that I have to do to learn some concept and grow in my skills. Personally, I think that learning happen in the trenches. So when you're trying to all wrap your hand around a concept or testing what works and what doesn't work, and adopting to things on the fly. And that is the phase that I want this series to capture. I see this as a critical part of growth and not just the polished product that you guys see on the long form video that I make, but the messy on cut process that gets me there is also very important. And we're going to talk about the whole process in this series. And to kick things off, we're going to start with this guy right here. Uh, this is Docker Deep Dive by Nigel Politin. I hope I'm not butchering his name. I want a solid understanding, no fluff understanding of how Docker works. So I picked up this book um, to kind of help me get a better understanding of it. The series is going to kick off with me walking through this book. We'll talk about what the book cover, we'll talk about things and test things together. We'll dive deeper into this book so we can get a full understanding of how DACA works before I start implementing it or testing it in my lab environment. Or well, technically, this phase is going to be the testing phase. So pretty much this series is gonna start with me going through this book, looking at all of the things that it's talking about, and put them into practice, test things out, and then talk about some of the failures, some of the lesson learned, some of the things that I learned in this book, and whether or not it's a really good book. So this series is gonna start with, well, Docker Deep Dive. So buckle up, and let's get started. We're gonna start with chapter one and two, and of course we're gonna take it chapter by chapter. Sometimes I'm going to bundle the chapters together depending on um, what, how long the chapter is, and the book is not that long either, so we should be able to get through this relatively quickly. But today we're going to talk about chapter one and chapter two. First of all, the book talked about how containers are not new. Containers were around before Docker, but they were basically a pain to use. You had to know your kernel inside out or script everything and deal with a ton of manual configuration. Docker came around, came around and then changed all of that. It took something that was powerful, but yet super complicated and made it accessible. And that is why Docker blew up and everybody started talking about Docker. What I find really interesting is how the book talks about how Docker basically democratized container the way VMware democratized virtualization. So think about it, VMware made it normal to run a bunch of VMs on a single server, but you still had to run an entire operating system for every VM. Looking back at it now, with containers in mind, that is kind of crazy when you think about it. Containers kind of flip that on its edge. So instead of running 10 VMs with 10 copies of Ubuntu, you can now run 10 containers that all share the host kernel, which is just much more efficient and it's faster. So no more waiting on a full guest OS to boot. Just ship your app and then boom, you're good to go. It also touched on how Docker is technically composed of two major parts. And I'm sure we're gonna dive into that a little bit more as we go on in the book. It talks about the CLI, which is the command line. And then it talks about the Docker engine, which is the server that does a lot of the heavy lifting on the back end. So basically when you type something like Docker run, the CLI basically just translate that into an API call and then send it to the Docker engine. The Docker daemon then takes that and then spin up your container. 
It's very simple on the surface, but heavy under the hood. It also touched on how Docker was born out of the Dot Cloud company, which tried to be a platform as a service company that had this internal container management tool, and that became, of course, became Docker. So they had to pivot to drop the platform as a service company and then kept the real gold and then ship Docker to the world as we know it today. So if you ask me, that's definitely a really smart pivot because well, Docker completely changed the wall if you ask me, so smart pivot. All right, so that's pretty much the recap for chapter one and chapter two. So nothing technical, nothing too crazy yet, just kind of a basic introduction of Docker and how Docker came to be. But I guess in our next vlog or in our next video, we'll start setting up things and see how things work. So like I said earlier, we're going to test a lot of concept in this book so we can get a really good understanding of things. And you guys are gonna come along for the ride. So I'm gonna talk about testing things, creating the VMs. Do, like you guys are gonna see the part where I learn how to do things before I understand them and then create a video about them. So definitely a lot more to come. Again, that's it for chapter one and chapter two. And as always, of course, guys, don't forget to stay geeking. I will see you guys on the next solo leveling log. Stay curious, stay geeking, and as always, peace.